Our brand new cycle of basic space lands is now available for purchase at www.itresolvesmtg.com. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another gameplay video. Uh, first of all, if the camera looks a little bit laggy on the face cam stuff, uh, it's because I'm trying a little bit of a different setup. I'm waiting on another piece to come in, so I apologize, but uh, hopefully it'll mean we have a better picture in the long run. I'm kind of excited about that, but today, uh, before companions get nerfed is the assumption. Uh, we're gonna try out a Luris mono white deck. This was, I think, suggested to us by somebody. I don't remember specifically who, uh, but they they recommended that we check out this mono white uh, Luris deck. Kind of built around, uh, well, Luris being able to recur everything in the deck. But uh, the idea is we get to play out, you know, a couple of very easy, you know, turn one threats, nothing major, and then just buff it up. And that's it. It's very, very simple, very, very straightforward. Uh, but it's all kind of around things like all that glitters, which really, really boosts the power level of this deck, uh, just kind of over the top. Very, very simple list. Uh, for the one drop creatures, uh, the main two attackers are Ginger Brute, which essentially is an unblockable threat, uh, can swing in uh, turn one, but also you pay that mana, and all of a sudden it's very, very difficult to block. Uh, Healer's Hawk, also a flying evasive threat, and with built-in lifelink, you can really, really gain a lot of life back with it. Uh, Alciad of Life's Bounty is here as well as a bit of a protection spell. Uh, very similar in the way that God's Willing is, but this just provides us with another creature option uh, to hopefully make it a little bit easier to go off. Uh, Glaring Aegis is here. Uh, tap target creature an opponent controls is really, really nice to ensure that you're able to get through for a lot of that damage. Uh, and it also b buffs the, the toughness a little bit more than the power. Uh, normally that's not very good, but with things like Solid Footing, which kind of swaps the uh, power toughness a little bit, uh, is actually very, very good. Uh, and speaking of which, Solid Footing is just a really nice card because it's a flash enchantment, so you're able to kind of leave this up, uh, and then based on whatever the opponent's doing, you can flash this out, so very, very good. Uh, Sentinel's Eyes is here uh, to give Vigilance mainly, but also just be a recursive threat even on its own. Without uh, without having a Luris out, this gives you a way to enchant whatever follow-up creature, say your opponent sleeps the board, is a good way to bring it back. Uh, Karametra's Blessing as a full four of in here. Obviously, we've got enchantment creatures or we're going to have enchanted creatures. Being able for one mana to either boost it up and hopefully win the game off of it or just straight up protect it against whatever the opponent's trying to do is really, really nice. Uh, we already kind of talked about God's Will and gives you that protection as well as a scry. Uh, and then in the two mana slot, all that glitters just one of the most powerful enchantments right now. It just gives you so much power toughness ratio, uh, especially based on what this deck is. Uh, and then Sentinel's Mark, uh, which is a flash enchant creature, very similar in the way that Solid Footing is, uh, that gives plus one, plus two, and Vigilance works very, very well with Solid Footing as well. Uh, however, if you do play it during the main phase, the creature also gets lifelink, which is kind of a nice little bonus. So uh, as far as lands go, we're running 20 of them, and it's just 20 planes. We are keeping it simple, very, very simple. We do not want tapped lands uh, at all. Um, I would argue that we could probably throw in a Castle Arden Veil or two, uh, just to, you know, just to make sure that we have uh, something to stick our enchantments on. But this is how the deck was made. We're going to keep it that way just to see how it goes. So that is the plan. Let's go ahead, jump in with some mono white Luris. Uh, I do kind of want to talk a little bit about um, the uh, companion issue uh, that we seem to be having. I know a lot of people are talking about it. I know Wizards is going to be talking about it very soon. Um, I'm also going to bring this a little bit closer because I get a weird echo. I hear myself and it's weird. Um, anyway, uh, the the whole like companion thing is going to be a little bit interesting. I'm, I don't know how they're going to solve it. They have said uh, very officially that they do plan to do something about it, but we don't know what yet. So I'm interested to see what. Uh, don't think we can keep this. We do have to have a creature kind of in our opening hand here. Uh, this, despite not really having many land, uh, is very much a keep hand. Uh, it just, we've got the ways to protect it. As long as we can get past turn one, uh, we'll be okay. I'm actually going to put, uh, one of these Karametra's Blessings back, uh, just so, uh, we can continuously kind of punch through as much as possible. Land is fantastic. That's going to help tremendously. 
Uh, I'll also be keeping an eye on our frame rate here. I know we've sometimes had issues with that, so I just want to make sure that we do the best we can to not have so many of those. Well, that's really bad for us. Uh, Luris helps long term, but uh, until then we can't do too much, so we'll see. Um, what I would might end up doing, depending on what we draw, uh, is holding off on the Luris until we can play the Ginger Brute, just so um, we can get two cards out per turn. Uh, the fact is, they get to play Luris next turn too, though. That's a little bit scary. Um, we'll take the risk. We're going to try this. Uh, it's probably not great, but we're going to try. Uh, we are learning with this deck. I've not play tested with this one. Uh, I do know that a lot of people uh, are really, really big fans of this deck, though, and I, I think for good reason. It's a sweet one. Okay, so now we get the Ginger Brood out, which is good. Go ahead and play that. Uh, let's put Vigilance on him. And let's go ahead and drop this here. Um, we're going to tap... We're going to tap the Luris, I believe. Um, I think we'll just swing in. Do we want to swing in with both? Yeah, kind of. Um, we can God's willing any of these. So, like, I'm actually super okay with that. Uh, yeah. So, let's God's willing on this. Uh, pro black. Sentinel's mark. Yeah, we'll keep a Sentinel's mark. I think that's good enough. We do really want an all that glitters, uh, quite badly to really pump this up, but that's okay. We'll, we'll hopefully get there. And this is why this deck is so potent is because of that, uh, the uh, Kaya's Ghost Form, super, super strong card. Uh, they get to sacrifice to the Fiend Hunter here. Um, and they get to pull out essentially whatever creature they want. Yep, it's a good one. We'll do this. Uh, and we'll go ahead and do this so that way this gets lifelink. Um, and we'll go ahead and attack here. I want to let them block. They get the Luris back if they want it, but looks like they don't want it. Um, and we'll pass here. We, we get to leave this up, uh, to, to give protection. Gonna go ahead and give it hexproof. <laughs> That just mitigates this as a an issue. It's very good. Uh, we do get to give this essentially unblockable though, which is very very nice. Um, let's go ahead and do it. Just tap that. Uh, give it the unblockable, and we'll swing in. I uh, hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend. Um, it has been very, very relaxing for me. Um, I, uh, I've got the house to myself this weekend. Uh, my fiance, uh, beautiful fiance is not here. Um, so I am just chilling, playing some magic, enjoying myself. It's been great. Um, we're going to give it pro black here. I think that's the right call. Kind of negates this ability. Um, but then also if they attack in, we just get to do whatever. So, um, but yeah, I'm enjoying myself just playing a lot of magic, uh, hoping to stream later today. I don't know if we will be able to, but I'm certainly going to do the best I can to get that going. Um, got some plans later in the afternoon with some family. Uh, so looking forward to seeing them. Um, but other than that, I'm just chilling. It's been a nice day. Uh, let's go ahead and swing in. Uh, and again, God's willing, going to help us protect this. Um, they're going to need to gain some life here. Um, so we'll see if they can. They keep trying to do this. Um, going to give it pro black. And there we go. Awesome, awesome. First game down. I am loving it. Um, sorry again for the lag on my camera. Uh, I, I keep looking down at OBS, which is right here, and it's... It's a little laggy, uh, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get that fixed very soon. Um, 
I'm liking this deck so far. It's a very straightforward deck. I feel like um, to like not summarize too early because we've only played one game, but I do think there we run into the issue of like eventually you run out of stuff to do. Luris helps with that if they deal with Luris though. You're in a bad spot. So we just have to be very careful of that. Um, I'm interested to see what Wizards is going to do about companions. Uh, I know they're announcing something. Yeah, hair. Uh, very soon. Dog hair. Sorry, guys. Um, so I'm interested to see what they're going to do. I have no idea. I um, I did watch Channel Fireball. Uh, they had a podcast with Gabby Sparts. Uh, uh, LSV and uh, the marketing guy from Channel Fireball and can never remember his name. Um, regardless, they uh, they were kind of discussing what they thought would be announced uh, when it came to the companion stuff. Um, so this is a very powerful hand in terms of enchantments, but we've got a lot of threats, so I'm going to keep it. Uh, and so I, I think it's interesting. I don't know what they're going to do. I have no idea. Um, I have my hopes. Uh, but I, to, to kind of voice my opinion on the companion mechanic as a whole, do I think the companion mechanic is broken? Honestly, not really. Um, as much as I like the companion mechanic and I, I do think it's very, very good right now. Um, like kind of stupid good. I don't think it's as broken as, uh, some of the specific cards I'm attacking in cause we've got a lot of threats. So if they want to trade off, I'm happy with that. Um, we also have Luris. Uh, so, but uh, we do, I mean, like Yorian, super broken in standard, especially right now, but even elsewhere. Um, I'm a little bit focused on standard because obviously that's what we've been playing a lot of. Um, but there are other places where these are really, really, you know, going ham. Um, Yorian, definitely broken. Luris, definitely broken. Um, Obosh, kind of. Uh, I don't know if he would be, like, considered completely broken as much as just, like, he's a really, really good card for the, the like, mono red list. But I don't, I don't know. I don't get the idea that he's necessarily broken. I actually think Obosh slows down the initial turns of the deck a little bit, um, which makes it a little bit tougher. Having played two different versions of Obosh, I didn't like either one of them more than I liked uh, mono red. Um but that was just like basic mono red. But that's just my opinion as well. So don't don't take that to heart too much. But um, I don't know. I just I I think the companion mechanic thematically very very cool. I love the idea of having like a little. It's almost like if you're you, you have a mount in like RPG games and stuff like that. It feels like very much that kind of mechanic, which I think is really cool. It is very very good. I mean, you get an extra card and like that's very powerful no doubt about it um is it broken i don't know i'm not i'm not 100 percent sold that it is we're actually gonna do this here uh we're gonna play this i'm gonna i'm gonna just swing in with this they can't really block i could have attacked with this i guess too they can block, but we have God's Willing, so like that feels bad, I think, for them. Uh, I know we're losing frames a little bit as well here. Sorry about it. Um, I'm already a bit laggy because of the camera setup, but um, we'll get that fixed very soon. Don't you worry. In fact, I've got a part coming today to, to help me do that, which I'm very excited about. Good card. Sure. Uh, Ginger Brute really doing the most in terms of just getting more damage onto the field. Um, super, super good card. It's very silly, but it's very good. Uh, yeah. Are they going to attack? Nope. Didn't think so. Um, cool. Not really what we were hoping for, but, uh, huh, huh. Let's do this. And we'll attack in here. They can still block it with these guys, but Bone Crusher, uh, as well as the Scorch Spitter, cannot, which is pretty crucial. Um, do we just go ahead and put the Luris down, or do we leave up God's Willings? Um, 
Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of in the camp of leaving out the God's Willings. I kind of want them to attack in with the Bone Crusher Giants so that we can, like, just block a lot. <laughs> sure. A um, little worried about, like, an Ember Cleave. That would be my biggest worry here. If they just hit, like, attack all, that's a problem. Nope. Okay. So I played it safe there. We probably didn't need to. They may be holding on to a card to deal with the Lurus, uh, which is part of why I'd like to be able to leave up an extra mana here. Um, that's pretty good. Let's do this. Tap that. Um... We're just going to attack. We're not going to give it unblockable. Not even technically unblockable. We're just not going to do its uh, ability there. Um, now we have a blocker for this, which is great. So I'm going to pass. Um, again, we're playing it a little bit slow, but I think that that's correct. They get to swing in for a damage here every turn if they'd like. Um, two now, which is good, um, but not going to win them the game. Like we're we're going to outpace them a little bit at some point. Um, we also have just built-in life gain, which is nice. So, yeah. Um, we can't auto-pass because we do have the God's Willings here as well as Alciad uh, to help us protect our Ginger Brute. Um, really just looking for more enchantments. I, I mean, that's, that's pretty much all we really care about. Definitely going to block here, um, especially with the God's Willings up. Whoops. Uh, they might... No, they can't. They can't even Ember Cleave right now. Um, okay. Seems a little silly that they did that, but sure. That's very good for us. So, let's do this. Um... Doing a lot more now. Damage now. Um... And again, I actually don't think we need to make this unblockable. Uh, we're going to gain the life either way. I'm kind of fine with just going in at it. Um, I don't think they would block, yeah. All right, we're up to 18 again. Um, it's an interesting game. It's a little bit slow, I apologize, with two seemingly very quick decks. Um, I'm saving Luris very, very heavily here, uh, which may or may not be correct, but I think that it's the right call. They must not have the Ember Cleave. They just can't because they've not even remotely left up the mana that they need to do it with. Um, they can attack for one. Okay. This seems bad, but sure. Because they can only do this with one of them. So this is going to be gain four life, lose one for us. I mean, yeah, that's fine. Just do that. Their attacks seem very odd. Um, don't necessarily agree with the way they're doing it. Um, that is nice because now... Um, let's do this. And we'll attack in with this. This just makes it so the, the Bone Crusher Giant cannot block. Um, excuse me, we did not have lifelink on this. That would only last the turn uh, off of the Sentinel's Mark, so that was my mistake. Um, but this just guarantees us we have a lethal swing next turn, um, unless they decide to block somehow. We get to play Luris out, and then we have God's Willing left up, um, which we'll, we'll leave a mana up for that. If they have a Shock... Or something like that, which may be very well the card that they're holding on to. We just get to... Yeah, there we go. All right. We're two games in with two wins. Uh, feeling pretty good. Uh, that that game lasted a little longer. Uh, we're already up to like 20 minutes. My goodness. Um, I like this deck, though. I'm really, really liking this deck. So let's go ahead and jump into our last game of the video. Please make sure uh, if you are not already subscribed to things like our Discord, you can certainly do that. The, the link is in the description. 
Uh, if you're interested in checking out our website, picking up those space lands that I hope you guys saw an ad for uh, at the beginning of the video, you can do that as well. Uh, all of that we'd certainly appreciate the support for. So uh, we do really, really appreciate the uh, the support lately. It's been phenomenal. Um, this isn't a great hand, um, but we're going to try it. We have the life linker, which is nice. Oh, we have a healer's hawk now too. That might be better. Um, we're gonna put this here though, because again, even if uh, even if this the sentinel's mark dies or goes to the graveyard, um, it doesn't really matter. We can kind of get through that. Okay. Um, this is an interesting deck. Uh, we're just gonna put this here, I think. We kind of want them to block, because uh, we can just Karametra's Blessing. <clears throat> Get rid of it. And gain a butt ton of life. Um, and now if they kill this this turn, we get to Luris next turn, which is like completely fine. Um, going to go ahead and play out the Luris, but I'm going to just leave up uh, our Karametra's Blessing to you. Uh, permanent spells anyway. Um, let's do this. It's just going to save it. Gain our three. And then again, we get to God's Willing. Uh, wow, voice crack. Um, if they've got anything to, uh, to play here. Like another Storm's Wrath. Bless him. Ah, well, that gets it. Yep. All right. We just need a new creature. Um, unfortunately, that isn't one. Probably a bit preemptive on the Luris. Uh, we didn't need to play it out, but that's okay. Discard the Sentinel's Eyes, because again, we can just play it from the graveyard, so that's fine. <laughs> How many Sentinel's Eyes can we draw? <laughs> um, ooh, very good. Yeah. My goodness. And this is the, the downfall of this deck, I think, is that it just doesn't necessarily have enough um, enough threats in the main board. It's got enough that like you should be able to get there, but I think if you... I mean, we'll tap it. Uh, if you're a little less preemptive with the Luris, you might be okay. Um, but And maybe that was my mistake um, to rush that, but I do think that this is a risk of a deck like this, but I, I think that's always the case. Um, Nothing we can do. Wow, Blast Zone. Very, very good. This is an interesting deck, actually. I've not seen a uh, land destruction deck like this before. Always tap your land before it's destroyed just to represent something. Well, <laughs> yep. We're going to have a handful of stuff and nothing we can do. Um... Especially if they've got another land destruction spell, we are done. We'll give it one more draw, but a chance the chance of us pulling out a win at this point, <clears throat> very, very unlikely with as much damage as they've got. I mean, we can do this, but it's really not going to be... Probably could leave up God's Willing here, but I... Tap that, I guess just because but here they get to just remove it yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and concede here they've got enough on the board that i think that makes sense um so i think here we're seeing the the downside to a deck like this which is uh as fast as it is and as powerful as it can be uh and as potent as it is to really just stick through you know a ginger brute to the opponent with a lot of stuff on it i think it's a little bit challenging uh if the opponent sweeps if the opponent uh is able to deal with your stuff which you've got a lot of protection for it don't get me wrong but you always have to leave it up and i think that was a bit of a mistake on my end more than necessarily a mistake on the deck's end um however uh we didn't we had the karametra's blessing it would have been a very difficult thing though to truly get around the blast zone I uh, don't really think there's a ton that we can do about that. Um, God's Willing doesn't do it. I, I, there, I, I don't think we can. Um, Karametra's Blessing, I guess, technically does. Uh, but 
it's a little bit tricky. We had to use it, otherwise we would have lost everything in the Storm's Wrath anyway. So I, I think that was just kind of a tricky situation. Um, that was also a very interesting deck I haven't seen before. So either way, uh, this deck is fun. It seems very, very solid as well. Uh, and so if, uh, if you're interested in checking out this list, I highly suggest it. It's a fun one. Um, check out the description. We can, we'll, we'll have the deck list down there for you. Uh, and of course we'll jump into a second, uh, video with this as well. So we will see three more games with this. We'll hopefully be able to get a couple more wins, uh, and just hang out with you guys. So, uh, enjoy your weekend, everybody. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I will see you very, very soon with part two of this mono white Luris deck. Thanks for watching.